Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So I'll be showing you how I make my molds and how it makes my art look so much like it's made out of clay rather than recycled plastic. So the particular idea for this mold goes back to my 18th birthday. I wanted to make a fairy for all of my friends that were coming that looked like them and captured their essence, but I wasn't able to do that confined to just you know, my normal mold of flower hats. And so I wanted to create a fairy where you could put anything on their head. My birthday actually ended up being really fun. We dressed like fairies, made fairy terrariums, and everyone loved the fairies made in their image and likeness. Anyways, I wanted to make something where you could put anything on their head, whether that be a frog, flowers, or, you know, a crown made in the image and likeness of your favorite singer. <laughs> Getting back to what I was talking about, in order to understand how I make the molds, we kind of need to understand the distinction between a cast and a mold. I talk about it a lot, but I don't know if I ever really explained it. So let's take fossils, for example. This is a trilobite. You can see on the left is the original cast. That's the trilobite. It's like been petrified by sediments over time, and it's basically the three-dimensional shape of the original trilobite. And then there's a mold. This is like an imprint of the trilobite. You can see there's cavities rather than a three-dimensional shape. And then there's the copied cast. This basically uses an imprint or a mold of an original shape in order to create copies of it. Sometimes museums do this in order to have multiple copies of a fossil so that they can sell it to people. So relating back to what I do, I create an original sculpture of an object that I want to replicate. In this case, a fairy. So my original fairy is just a little, you know, just a little guy. <laughs> Just a little guy wearing a flower petal hat, flower dress, and two little stumps in the back for um, the wings to be mounted onto. So the image shown here is not actually the original sculpture. The one shown in the picture on the left is um, the first recycled plastic cast I made. Uh, the original was made out of clay but I don't have a picture of her because her head fell off. Um, so I didn't really anticipate this happening, hence why I didn't take a picture of the original before I made the mold. But basically, when I removed the silicone putty from the original clay sculpture after the putty had set, um, her head stayed in the mold and her body left like I, I don't know um but basically the two parts were separated and just like her limbs were like still stuck in the mold I had to like dig out the clay from the mold and so when I wanted to remake the molds because my old one was getting torn and it was just you know used so many times um I had to use the first fairy that I made in order to make a new mold. So when I say original cast, I'm using the recycled plastic one because the clay one doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so you can see that there is a mold of both sides of the fairy just because it's a three-dimensional object and it's not like the pins where it's just one flat shape. Um, and in order to make sure that the shape is held and all the details are captured, I have an imprint of both sides. And then, of course, I have numerous copies of the original cast. As you can see, all of these fairies in the picture have little flower petal hats, little dresses, two little legs with their hands on their knees. Um, they're all in the same position and that's because they're all like created from the same original um, sculpture. So they're all the same shape, they're just painted in different colors. And sometimes there are differences in the shapes just because the plastic melts differently. Sometimes they're missing a leg, um, but that's okay, you know? And sometimes they have a little bit too much leg. I remember one fairy 
Um, the legs got kind of fused together and there was just a big blob. So I cut out some of the plastic and then I turned the other leg into a frog. So it just looked like she had a little frog friend with her. It was cute. So circling back to making a new fairy mold, in order to make a mold, I had to make a original cast. So I did that out of clay and I wanted to make sure that there was nothing on the head so that I could just put whatever. Um, whether that be a little frog, a flower crown, or a mushroom hat, you know? The world is your oyster. In order to make the mold, I needed to have a cast. Um, and so I decided to make it out of clay once again. I did not learn my lesson, and this time the head also fell off. And I once again had to dig out some of the clay from the mold. This is not to say the clay was squishy. It was completely cured. It's just that... Sometimes clay is like, you know, fragile. Um, I guess some of the limbs just got suctioned, you know, just because of the, like it was, it was compressed into like silicone putty. And so some of it decided it just wanted to stay inside the mold. I actually did use parts of the original um, cast. I used the same head and I used parts of the body because I had a cast. Um, and I liked the face shape and I wanted it to be the same size, roughly. So I just reused those parts. Um, and that's why you can see it's kind of like a, like a Franken sculpture. There's parts of it that are polymer clay and there's parts of it that are just, um, DOS clay. Um, so once this mold that I currently have for this, um, particular cast wears out, I'll probably use um one of the plastic cast copies in order to make a fresh mold um you know because they, they get worn out over time but if i do want to make like a new fairy shape or just something that's more intricate i'm probably gonna still make it out of clay just because i don't know what else i would make it out of um but i will probably use like a strong sealant in order to make sure that the limbs don't, you know, come off the body and that it, it all stays together and I can reuse it over and over again, rather than having to salvage bits and pieces from a cast that has been broken um, just because of the sheer compression inside the silicone. Anyways, the nice thing about having a fairy shape that doesn't have on the head is that, um, you can just put- Okay, I found this on the web for shape that doesn't have anything on the head is that. Check it out. Oh my god. Um, so Siri thought I was talking to her, and she just came up with a bunch of websites. Um, let me read some of the- some of the results. What babies' head and skull shapes mean about their health. I feel insecure about my head shape. I feel really depressed. Quora. Craniosynotosis. It's from chalk.org. This is really strange. I don't like the whole Hey Siri thing because um, oftentimes I don't even say her name, but she just thinks that I'm talking to her. This is creepy, man. She's just always listening. I need to turn that off. So moving on from that creepy incident that kind of ruined the voiceover vibes, um, is, you know, now you guys know how, you know, my molds are made a little bit more in depth. And this is the true reason why my fairies look like they're made out of clay. It's because they were made in the image and likeness of <laughs> um, a clay cast, an original clay sculpture. So, you know, it's, it's really amazing what silicone putty can do. It just captures all those fine details. Um, I remember... The first fairy cast um, that I made out of recycled plastic, you could see some of my thumbprints um, from the original clay cast that had been, you know, imprinted when I was sculpting it. So it's just really amazing how much detail the putty picks up on, and that's primarily, you know, why I use it. It's just really great capturing those details, and it allows me to make multiple copies of the same shape and just 
you know, customize them based on how I paint them. Um, and it's, it's just a cheap way to make molds um, and recycle plastic. It's really great, to be honest. Um, and I love that I can reuse them over and over and over again. And when they do get worn down, I just cut them up and I melt them. Well, they don't melt, but I just embed them into um, whatever I'm melting at that time. Um, just so I don't have to like throw it away. Anyways, you can see here um, when I'm enveloping this clay cast um, in the putty, it has to, you kind of have to roll it around the shape in order to make sure it, it gets into all of the crevices um, and it captures all those details. Because if you were to just like, I don't know, stick it in, you might snap the sculpture or there might be a gap um, that will ultimately be filled up with plastic where you don't want it to be. Um, so in order to make sure that um, you know, all of the details are captured and that it looks the way you want it to, you need to make sure that the, the putty is just really skin tight, I guess, um, and that it's really, it's, it's in all the crevices, you know, <laughs> um, you want to make sure that you wrap, you know, like let's say an arm, um, completely on all sides with the putty rather than having a pocket and then suddenly um, when you when you remove it like and and melt a new cast um, the arm shape is distorted just because the the putty wasn't you know wasn't rolled onto the surface completely um, and so just making sure that it's airtight um, is key in making sure all those details are captured, but it's also what compresses the sculpture so much that when you, um, when you try to take it out after it's set, it can break. Um, however, when I, when I made, um, the fairy mold with the, with the hat the second time around using the first recycled plastic fairy that I made rather than the clay cast since it had been you know broken into pieces um that wasn't an issue just because it's plastic and it's all one piece you know when you're making something out of clay it's a bunch of different pieces that you um you fuse together you know by thinning out the clay and using water and stuff so it wasn't an issue with plastic um, and also because it had been sealed. So I'm thinking that if, if you do it with clay, like if you're making a new shape, um, hopefully a sealant will prevent that from happening. Um, just because, you know, I don't want to have to keep remaking it <laughs> over and over again. Um, and it's easier to just have that original with you. Um, anyways... You, you really have to make sure that you get all, all the details. Um, yeah, and so once I finish enveloping such a large figure like this, I indent where I want the cut to ultimately be. Um, because like I mentioned earlier, because it's a 3D shape, you want to have two sides of the mold. You want to have two sides so that you know, it doesn't lose its shape. Imagine if you had that fairy cast and it was all one mold. Where would the opening be? You know? Um, it wouldn't work. And so, after it's set, um, and this particular brand of silicone putty, um, it's called Amazing Mold Putty, uh, it sets usually after 15 minutes, um, but I usually wait longer for big pieces like this just because you want to make sure that it's not still um, able to be manipulated and distorted in terms of its shape. Anyways, once your once your molds are set and then cut, um, you're just ready to melt. You're ready to make those new casts. I modified this one to have a wire crown 
in order to make a Ravina fairy honoring her Asha's Awakening album. Um, and you can just make different kinds of flower crowns, you know, this is hydrangea, this is a spotted leaf begonia fairy, um, and you can just let your imagination go wild, you know. I work at a plant nursery now and I'm discovering all of these new plant varieties and it's honestly so inspiring in terms of creating, you know, new pieces that reflect the sheer diversity of nature. It's just amazing, you know? Um, so please consider supporting me. Uh, this was a highly requested video in terms of how I make my molds um, and, you know, how it looks like clay. And so this answers your question. Um, it's because they were molded after a clay sculpture. That's why it looks like it's made out of clay. Um, yeah, so please consider supporting my Etsy or my Instagram or send me a little tip on Venmo. Um, I'm gonna go to college soon and I need all the financial assistance I can get. Um, fun fact, I'm going to be studying molecular environmental biology at Berkeley. Um, please wish me luck. Hopefully I won't die or burn out. Um, and I'm honestly just really excited to go deeper into my interest in um, molecular biology and environmental science. You can probably tell it's something I'm really passionate about, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a journey that I'm really excited to start. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.